Australia's original grunge band, The Angels, have just announced the release of a new album and a sensational tell-all book that they're about to take on the road. For those of you who may have been living under a rock for close to 50 years, brothers John and Rick Brewster formed The Angels with the late Doc Neeson back in 1970, taking Australia and the world by storm. Joining me now to tell us all about what's obviously a hell of a story is the original bad boy of rock, John Brewster. Hi, John. And tell well, me firstly, let's start with the album. How did that come about and, and what is it all about? Well, the album's sort of a, a, a companion, I guess, to the book. Uh, so it tells a bit of, uh, of the story. There's four tracks of Moonshine Jug and String Band, which is actually the band that was formed in 1970. Um, Doc joined the band about a year later and, you know... I guess the rest is history but we had a reunion of the Moonshine Dragon String Band back in 92 and it was great fun and we recorded some tracks and uh, so there's four tracks of that and Doc's singing on two of them and I'm singing the other two and then there's uh, songs of the Brewster Brothers with my three sons playing with us uh, which is a and they're, they're, most of those were recorded live at a Foxtel uh, Studios uh, concert we did with just a very small, intimate, 100 people audience. And uh, yeah, they are songs that Rick and I wrote for me to sing when Doc left the band in 2000. Um, so they're represented. And, of course, the, the rest of that particular CD, is a, it's a double CD thing. So the, uh, the rest of that CD has got Dave Gleason singing songs that we wrote with him when he joined the band back in... Uh, 2011, six years ago. God, that's gone fast. Uh, it's all gone pretty fast, hasn't it? The days since you formed in Adelaide in 1970 seem to have shot by incredibly quickly. You, you, you say your three boys um, have played with you at one time, and I know that Sam is currently in the match. Didn't you discourage them from becoming musicians? <laughs> no. no I, I neither encouraged them or discouraged them. I don't think there's much choice for... My family, my, I mean, my grandfather started all this. He was a concert pianist, and and my, my dad was uh, was the lead cellist of the symphony orchestra. And in fact, uh, when he stopped playing professionally, he was the director of music for ABC in Adelaide. And uh, we grew up in a very much musical family. I was kind of black sheep because I was always in a rock and roll. Rick was a uh, my brother Rick, of course, who's our lead guitar player, is fantastic. Uh, classical pianist back in his teens and he still plays great. And that everybody knew of and, and obviously still knows a whole lot about with ACDC because you were really masters of your instruments and and you were kind of really authentic from in, in where you were coming from as the Angels. How would you best describe the Angels' success? It was hard earned. Just an ACDC will tell you the same story. Uh, of course, we were in the same record company as ACDC. They became great friends of ours and, in fact, had a lot to do with our signing uh, with Alberts. Uh, but basically what, what we did was we did everything. We wrote songs. We, we put them on stage. We did everything in front of live audiences. Uh, and, you know, you'd write a song and you put it on stage. If you didn't get much of a response, you tend to throw that song away and write another one. So we got, we got kind of better and better at at songwriting and and performance, you know, performance has always been a huge part of the uh, of our life and and continues to be. I, I read a quote somewhere that says you've survived all these years and gone on to make new new music, something that uh, you can be very proud of. Were there times where the where you thought you may not survive? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there the were. I mean, uh, Doc. Neeson had his demons and uh, uh, left the band a number of times and left us wondering, you know, where we were going to go from there because um, it's, uh, you know, the, the Angels, I guess if you're talking about a brand, the Angels brand is, is uh, you know, obviously incredibly recognised. Uh, John Brewster perhaps isn't. Rick Brewster perhaps isn't. Yeah, Doc found it the same when he tried to do a solo career that Doc Neeson actually didn't mean that much in the marketplace. But the Angels means a lot. And to me, it's all about the repertoire too. You know, I think the repertoire is in a way bigger than we are. 
because uh, mm. a lot of these songs are in the psyche of the, you know of, of the Australian public and and you know but uh, but you asked the question did it look like it was going to end at times yes it did but you know we've weathered all that and kind of proud to say that you know we're still doing it I must say also that we're not just doing it we're loving it <laughs> more more now than when you started out. I don't know about that, you know, uh, but I don't think there's much difference. I, I think, you know, obviously, you know, as young guys, we we were pretty passionate. I, we were probably tighter, more, more tired. I mean, you know, we used to just drive, you know, right like through the night and do shows and play, play on stage for five hours. I don't, you know, stuff we couldn't do today. But back in those days, we didn't matter. We just did it. But... Um, no, I mean, I think we, I, I would call it equal. I think we play with an equal amount of passion today as we ever did. We have a great lineup with my son Sam on bass, Nick Norton, and he's in his mid 30s on drums. What a powerhouse rhythm section they are. And then, of course, Dave Gleason, who's an absolute classic. He's a, he's a wonderful front man. You know, he didn't try and copy Doc or anything. He's, he didn't need to. He's just a, he's just a brilliant front man. I kind of think of him as kind of part dramatic actor and part clown. <laughs> so you so you're pulling a, a whole new audience as well as your old fans who are who keep coming back to see you. There's a whole new generation of Angels fans who who uh, who are in and and others who are yet to discover this brand. Yeah, well, it's it's actually funny enough, Sandy. It's always been the same. We've always had a lot of young people come to our shows, and I think it's. It's kind of because uh, reputation as a live act has always been really strong, and and you know people, uh, young people like to come out and rock out to the band. It's it's great. We obviously love it. They're, they're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Well, you, your passion certainly comes through, and isn't it wonderful to be involved with something that you still feel as passionate about now as you did when you first started out almost 50 years ago. Um, this is the first book that you've ever released. This is a, a departure for you. What brought that about, John? Oh, well, we just think it's time to tell the story. You know, it, uh, you know, it may have been time to tell the story a few years ago, but it's taken a few years to write this. And uh, um, it's a story that, number one, we can still remember. <laughs> um, as I say, Dave, Dave Leeson has been in the band for six years, so it's not like we're trying to establish him as our front singer. He's, he's well loved by our fans. Seems yeah. a really appropriate time to release the book. Yeah, look, you know, this this big fallout with Doc is is very much a beat right. up to go his own way, which is, of course is absolutely his well was his right to do. Mm. Um, you know, we're not we're not married. You know, it's like you know, people feel free to come and go as they please but Doc decided he wanted to do something different and he tried it didn't work it was probably a silly decision but then you you got to wonder well you know he I mean Doc died from a brain tumor so when did that kick in I don't know because because he was making decisions we didn't understand but we never had a falling out with him uh it's just I think certain certain individuals and and therefore you know the spin-off is certain people in the press assume that it was this great, you know, legal battle, which it never was. No, no one really knows the story except us. And a lot of that story we wouldn't tell anyway, you know. We, co- we cover it to a small extent. It's, it, you know, we, we're not we're not interested in writing a book and, and making some great big dramatic thing out of, you know, the fact that we went our separate ways in the last few years of Doc's life. It, it's not appropriate and... But it's a it's a it's a it's a story of the band. It's a story of our whole history, that you know does start from in in Rick and my case starts with our grandfather. In Doc's case, it starts with him being a an a, you know British migrant with his family and moving into Elizabeth. And you know we all came together. A lot of the excitement to me about this, telling the story is actually telling the the early days stuff, because that's that's where all this. Weird stuff happens, like, you know, three people get to meet each other that maybe never would have met if it wasn't for some, uh, you know, shared love of music. Uh, and then they, they do a weird thing like be a, a drag band where my brother, who is a fantastic classical pianist, is playing 
the washboard with symbols on his fingers. Now, I mean, it was like weird. Uh, but, you know, that was those days when we were at university and studying other things. I was doing filmmaking and drama, so was Doc. Um, although we didn't even know each other at university. That happened afterwards. But, um, just, you know, talking about the early days, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun, really. And what we went through to, to get there, you know, because, mm. I mean, any band that forms and starts to make writing songs and recording albums, it's, and if anyone tells you they only did it for fun, they didn't, they didn't want to, you know, they didn't care about success. Well, I reckon that's a, they're telling fibs because that's what you want to do. You know, you, make, you want to make a career out of it, and that's what we did. And um, you engaged your longtime uh, friend Bob Yates to write that story for you, to write the book. It's simply called The Angels. And uh, Bob himself, for, for those who don't know, he started off with a folk club in Balmain in uh, 1974 in Sydney, and uh, he started promoting lots of little concerts and big dances with the likes of Skyhooks, Captain Matchbox, uh, sports, ferrets, and of course you guys as well as, as the Angels. He also mm. managed My Six for a while um, and toured them with um, Iggy Pop and the Ramones. And mm. now he's turned author. How did that come about? Uh, well, he's a reluctant author. It, it came about because we always think that Bob has a very good gift of the gab, you know. And uh, <laughs> we sort of, well, he's a good friend, and we Rick and I said, we want you to write the book. And he said, no, no, no. So uh, eventually, I, I guess we probably leaned on him, and he eventually went, "Oh, all right." And, uh, we are still friends, but uh, <laughs> but there's probably been times where he thought, "Gee, I wish I'd never met those guys," you know, because it's. I mean, the amount of effort that he's put into writing this is quite astronomical, and and it wasn't always easy, you know. He's, been, he's had to track down people and interview them, and then get what they've said interpreted into a written format, and and then take bits from from all of that and put it in the book. He's put in an absolutely Herculean effort, and uh, we love him for it, and I think we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> and as I mentioned at the start, you're about to take both the book and the album on tour. You're doing a lovely little intimate uh, book tour where you'll be signing copies of the book and answering questions from fans. That's a whole different look for the Angels too and, and one that I'm sure every Angel fan out there will appreciate. Yeah, well, Sandy, that's the other thing that we've kind of realised over the last few years, that people are actually really interested in hearing the story. You know, how did this happen? How did that happen? Um, so what we're doing is Rick and me and uh, great Ken Raymond Hawkins, who was our lighting guy back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, and toured the world with us and uh, was, I think, the greatest lighting guy in Australia. Um, and he's also incredibly intelligent and entertaining, and he'll, he'll be kind of being our MC and fielding the questions and reading some excerpts from the book and telling a few of his own stories about life on the road with the angels. So we're looking forward Indeed. to doing so that. Indeed, so if anybody wants to check out uh, dates and locations for that, it's all up on your website? Yeah. It is, and other means of, you know, yeah, face, we've got Facebook and website, and, yeah, so Fantastic. it'll all be there. Fantastic. Lovely chatting to you, and uh, continued success. May you keep playing together as a band till 120, because you do it so <laughs> well and with so much love. Thank you on, on well, behalf thanks. of Australia for all you've given us. That's lovely, Sandy. Thank you so much, and uh, yeah, we're... We can ask still standing. We'll, we'll keep playing as long as we possibly can. Awesome. Thanks, John.